In the last lecture, we learned about custom property binding and at input decorator. Now in this lecture, we are going to learn about custom property binding and at input decorator in more detail with another example. So what we want is in the product list component. So we have this product list component here. In this product list component, we want to create another child component called filter component. So let me go ahead and let me open terminal and let me clear the console here. And actually, if I go to this first terminal here, there we are already in the product list folder. So let me clear the console here. Okay, so currently we are in the product list folder in this terminal. Now in this product list folder, I want to create a new component and I want to call that component filter. For that, I can use this ng generate command. I want to generate a component and I want to call this component filter. If I press enter, it should create a new component for us called filter component. So that component has been created and you can see that filter component here. Now, as usual, I will go ahead and I will delete this spec.ts file. We don't need it for now. And let's go to filter component.ts file. There we have this filter component class. And for this filter component class, we have this app filter selector. This is the view template for this filter component class. And this is its style sheet. Okay, now we want to use this filter component class in our product list component. So let me go ahead and let me grab the selector of this filter component class. Let's go to product list component.html. And in there, before this div, I want to use that filter component. Now, currently, this filter component will render a single paragraph. Basically, it is going to render this paragraph in the web page. But here, we don't want to render any paragraph. Instead, we want to render some radio buttons. In order to save some time, I have already written some HTML and CSS for that. So let me grab this HTML from here. Let's go to VS Code and let's paste that HTML inside this filter component.html file. In the same way, let's go back. And from here, let's also grab this CSS. Let's go back to VS Code. Let's open filter component.css file. And let's paste that CSS here. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. So here you can see that filter component has been rendered. So in here, we have these three radio buttons. Okay. Now, for some reason, this is being rendered here. That's because let's go back to VS Code. Somewhere I have commented that code. I think it is in the search component. So let's go to search component.html. Yeah, and here we have this code, but I wanted to comment it and in HTML, we need to comment it something like this. Okay, now if I save the changes and if you go to the web page, that should be gone. All right, so now what we want is, we are going to use these radio buttons to filter the products. Now here, instead of calling it free courses and premium courses, I want to call them in stock and out of stock. And if the product is in stock, then the value here is going to be true. But if the product is not in stock, in that case, it is going to be false. Let me go ahead and let me close the CSS file as well as this search component HTML file. Now, this filter component here, it is a child component of this product list component because we are using this filter component inside this product list component. And in the product list component, if I go to product list component.ts file, here we have a list of products. So now what we want is after these radio buttons, we want to display here the total number of products we have. Here I want to display the total number of products which we have in stock. And here we want to display the total number of products which is out of stock. Okay, so in the filter component.ts file, I'm going to create three properties which is going to store that values. So I'll say all, it is going to be of type number and let's initialize it with the value zero. Then let's say we have a property called in stock. Again, it is going to be of type number and initially let's set it with the value zero. And let's also create another property out of stock. This is also going to be of type number and initially let's set it to zero. And in the template file, we want to display the values of these properties. 
So let's go there. And there I'm going to use string interpolation syntax. Okay, this all should be a string. After that, we want to display the value stored in this all property. And after that, again, we want to have a string. And we want to enclose this value within parentheses. So for that, I'll use an opening parenthesis here and a closing parenthesis here. So if I save the changes and if we go to the web page, it should look something like this. Let's do the same thing for in stock and out of stock. And if we save the changes, if we go back to the web page, so now we have that number for all these radio buttons. Now we are going to get the value for these properties from the parent component. In this case, the parent component is product list component. So we are going to get the value of these properties from the parent component. So here we are going to pass data from the parent component to child component. And to do that, we have learned that in order to receive data from the parent component, we need to decorate our properties with add input decorator. So here let's go ahead and let's first import input from angular slash co. And then let's go ahead and let's decorate these properties with at input decorator. Let's do the same thing for other two properties as well. And since we have decorated these properties with at input decorator, now we can use them like an attribute on the selector of this filter component. Basically, wherever we are using this app filter component, there we can use these properties like an attribute. So let's go to product list component.html. There we are using this filter component. There, let's say all equals. And here we are going to do property binding on this all property. And let's assign it with the value 10. So if I save the changes and if you go to the web page, there you will see that 10 is being displayed here. So in this way, we are passing data from the parent component to the child component, which in this case is filter component using custom property binding and at input decorator. So here, whatever value we have assigned to this all property, that value it will be assigned to this all property in the child component class. Okay, now here, instead of assigning a hard coded value, what we want is we want to get the total count of the products which we have inside this product list component. So if we go to this product list component.ts file, there we have our products array. Now let's scroll down to the end of this products array. And here, let's go ahead and let's create some properties. So let's say total prod count. And now we want to get the total number of product count. For that, we can simply say this dot products dot length. And this will give us the total number of products count. So now let's go ahead and let's assign this property to this all property. This all property is basically the property of child component. In this case, it is the property of filter component. So to that, let's go ahead and let's assign that property. Let's save the changes and let's go to the web page. And here, now the total number of product count should be rendered. So in this case, it is 34. Now we want to do the same thing for this in stock property and out of stock property. So let me copy this in stock property and here let's go ahead and let's bind it. And for property binding, we need to wrap it within square brackets like this. And to that we can assign a property from the parent component class. So this property here, it is from the parent component class. We have defined it inside the parent component class, basically inside this product list component class. And we are assigning it to the property of the child component class. And in this way, we are passing data from the parent component class to the child component class. All right. Now let's again go to this product list component.ts file. So here we are calculating the total number of products. Now we also want to get the total number of products in stock. So let's create a property total product in stock. And again, we will say this dot products dot and here we want to filter the product for that we are going to use this filter method and to that we can pass a callback function let's simply call it p 
such that and here we need to provide a condition based on which this filter method should filter the products here we want to say p dot is in inventory if it is true so this filter method here it will return us an array and in that array it will contain only those products where the is in inventory is true it will contain only those products which is in stock and we want to get the count of that product for that we can use this length property now let's go ahead and let's use this property and let's assign it to in stock property of child component and with this if we save the changes if we go to the web page now it should also render the total number of products which is in stock let's also go ahead and let's calculate the total number of products which is out of stock let's go back to vs code let's get the property name from the child component class it is out of stock Let's go ahead and let's bind it in the parent component class. So let me move these in different lines so that it will be more readable. Okay, so here now I want to bind this out of stock property. Again, here we are performing custom property binding. In the parent component class, basically in this filter list component class, let's go ahead and let's create another property. I'll call it total product out of stock. And again, I will copy this expression here. I'll paste it here. And here we want to get all those products, which is not in inventory. So in that case, this is in inventory will be false. So instead of true, I'll say false. And again, this filter method here, it will return an array with all those products where is in inventory is false. So basically it is going to contain all the products which is out of stock and then we are calculating the length of that array then we are assigning it to this total product out of stock property now let's go ahead and let's bind this property to this out of stock property of the child class let's save the changes let's go back to the web page and now you can see the out of stock product is 11 and if you add this in stock and out of stock it should give us the total number of products okay so from this lecture and from the last lecture we can say that custom property binding is when we bind properties of a component class to some typescript expression and we can pass data from parent component to its child component using at input decorator also in order to bind data to a property of a component class we need to decorate it with at input decorator then only we can bind some data to that property. So I hope from the last lecture and from this lecture, now you understand what is a custom property binding and what is the use of at input decorator and how we can pass data from the parent component to its child component. In the next lecture, let's learn how we can pass data from the child component to its parent component using custom event binding. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.